Debate around GLP-1 drug prices and availability rages on with concerns that ballooning costs could limit access and cost the government billions. Monday, former NEC director Brian Deese wrote in a New York Times op-ed saying the U.S. government should try to lower prices through its Medicare purchasing program, but not all experts agree that that's the most effective way to control costs and blunt the impact on the federal budget. Former FDA commissioner and CNBC contributor Dr. Scott Gottlieb joins us now. Uh, Scott, great to see you. Um, and, and we had a, a very heated discussion surrounding this yesterday, um, and we also had some question marks around some of the numbers, uh, the eye-popping numbers that Deese had outlined in the op-ed, and you also um, took issue with some of those numbers. What did, what in your opinion, did Deese miss? Well, there's no question this is going to cost Medicare a lot of money, but not nearly what was estimated in that op-ed. First of all, they wrongly used list price to make their assumptions on what the cost would be rather than the net price. We know discounting is very heavy in the market right now on the order of 40 to 60 percent between Wagovi and Zepbound. It's only going to get more uh, intense. And also, they wrongly assumed, it appears, that this was approved under a biologics license application. That's a biological. Uh, in, and in fact, it was approved under a new drug application. And therefore, it's already subject to the price negotiation within the IRA, within Medicare. And it's probably going to go on the list this year. So it's probably going to be subject to the negotiated price as early as 2027. And some analysts on Wall Street are also estimating that. And so the notion of the op-ed was that we need to extend the price negotiation under the IRA to encompass these drugs. Uh, because otherwise they won't be subject to the negotiated price until 2030, they said in the op-ed. And in fact, they'll be subject to the negotiated price as early as 2027, and they'll go on the list probably, semaglutide will probably go on the list this year based on when it, when it was approved. It was approved in December of 2017. That's seven years out, and so therefore mm -hmm. subject to negotiation. Novo is probably regretting that they got it approved in December of 2017 rather than January of 2018, mm -hmm. because now it's seven years. Right, right, right. He should have, uh, Dee should have talked to some of the analysts on Wall Street who are already factoring in 27 being the year in which it would go on the Medicare list in terms of up for negotiation. I'm wondering, though, Scott, because, you know, you mentioned Ozempic specifically. Wagovi was approved later on for weight loss specifically. And so is there a difference in terms of what is able to be negotiated in terms of what the use of the molecule is? So the price negotiation, the negotiated rate is going to be applied to semaglutide. So it's going to encompass all the formulations. And so presumably, based on how Medicare has behaved in other settings similar to this, they're going to extend that not just to the formulation for diabetes, Ozempic, but also the formulation for weight loss, Wagovi. So that, too, will be subject to the negotiated price as early as 2027. How do you think about the gains, uh, though, to society that, that decent really factor in that a lot of other people are thinking more broadly about. I mean, theoretically, if you're not having uh, a serious cardiovascular event, you're not missing work, for instance, or if you're, if you're not in need of knee surgery because you're not obese, you're not missing work either. Yeah, it's not just the productivity benefits that we're going to see from this, but also the direct health benefits. And mm -hmm. they could be quite substantial. There's a lot of comorbidity inside the Medicare population related to weight. Uh, and it also underscores the fact that a lot of people are going to be newly eligible for these drugs even before Medicare expands coverage for weight loss. And so their assumption in the op-ed was that once Medicare expands coverage for weight loss, then all these patients will be newly eligible for the drug. And in fact, as new indications get on the labels of these drugs, and Wagovi's probably going to get an indication for cardiovascular risk reduction this year, those patients will become eligible for the drug. Because even though Medicare doesn't cover drugs for weight loss, they do cover drugs for cardiovascular risk reduction. If you look at the numbers right now, there's about 23 million Medicare beneficiaries that had, ha, have had a prior stroke or MI. If you figure half of them are already eligible for this drug because they have diabetes, and then half of the remaining patients probably qualify based on BMI, that gets you to around 5 to 6 million patients who will be newly eligible under Medicare for Wagovi once it gets that label expansion probably this year. And the total population of Medicare patients who would be eligible just based on BMI alone is ro probably roughly around 20 million. So 25 percent of that population will be, will be eligible just based Based on the label expansion this year, and it's only going to increase as they get indications for sleep apnea, um, chronic kidney disease, and other comorbidities.